Hi again everyone, welcome. We're going to the Luxembourg Gardens today. Here we are right at the top, coming in off uh, Boulevard Saint-Michel, which is the heart of the Latin Quarter. And we're on the left bank, which is the south bank. The heart of intellectual and cultural and arguably political life in France. The right bank being more commercial and financial. So the left bank is where Paris University has its seat and all of its offshoots are dotted around the neighborhood. <coughs> Typical French garden, very symmetrical, very organized, with the odd statue here and here, here and there, very classic. You can see the way the trees have been carved in a bit of a boxy, not very elegant, uh, but certainly it's a uniform way of I um, don't know how you'd call it, carving trees. University buildings on the left. That one's unusual because it's not the usual granite stone. And walking down to the main part of the Luxembourg Gardens. It means a higher education establishment for music. It's the Faculty of <laughs> Pharmacy. <laughs> Lots of university buildings here on the left bank. Here we are at the main entrance uh, at the top of the Luxembourg Gardens, which uh, Luxembourg Gardens in the heart of the Latin Quarter, and a favourite haunt of expats for their jogging. Expats being among the few who can afford to live in this part of town, but also a great place to relax and uh, enjoy the sun in summer and do some people watching. There are as many tourists as there are genuine locals that frequent the gardens. And because we're on the left bank, you can be sure that there are plenty of intellectuals and culture buffs among the visitors. Down that rather grandiose building down the other end is the French Senate the upper house of uh, the French Parliament. Um, and actually the gardens belong to the Senate and they are uh, open to the public by grace of the Senate's authority. The gardens in Paris and their flower beds are truly world class. They de definitely deserve accolades. They probably win competitions. I don't know enough about international gardening, but uh, the Paris gardens and, and look at those flower beds. Extraordinary. And a profusion of colour. The edge. Can you see the edge? Yeah. How they perfectly make yeah. the edge. Right. And this is it. I, I couldn't see anywhere. I, I noticed in London. And they perfectly make an edge for every single part. Now we're in the part of the last one. 
half of these buildings are, in fact, I think all of the buildings are classified. I mean, you can't, you can't alter them because they're, they're historical monuments. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one's which. I bought one of what, you know, it's just chock full of history, this place. Typically, what's known as a hotel, which used to be not a hotel at all, a private residence for a noble family, which would have a big entrance and then a courtyard inside, and everybody would live there with the servants and everything else in reception rooms. So it's known as a particular hotel or a private. We're strolling hotel. through the sixth Alan Deesport yeah. now. I think it's, it's the sixth. Really deep in the Latin Quarter, and as I say, the buildings here uh, are residential. So there's lots of families that live here, and uh, they're not all being converted into offices. And it's well worth peeking in through the older buildings. There's a mixture of, of ages here. It's a bit bit more of a mixture than than the right bank, um, since you've got some buildings dating back to. Uh, the 18th century and then many more 19th century and even a few 20th century. So quite a mixture of architectural styles and some of them are old, uh, built off the old medieval um, private townhouses called Hotel Particulier. So worth a peek through the front door if you can to get into some remarkable courtyards and visit some really unique architecture. Paris and France, of course, was featured in uh, so many films and series that some sites seem to be quite classic. But we're coming up to one such site, which is this cream-coloured car here. It looks like very French. It's actually one that we never see anymore. That is definitely a classic car and antique. It's a Citroën DS, a uh, unique model since these ones had hydraulic suspension and was one of Citroen's uh, proprietary uh, innovations. There you go. It looks quite normal, but actually you never see those anymore. It's definitely a classic car. And it was favored, the black versions were favored by governmental employees and politicians. We're coming up to, on the left is the police station and the town hall of the six arrondissement, I believe, and we're coming up to Place Saint-Sulpice, um, which is one of, Paris is bigger churches, not one which I hold particularly in high esteem for its architecture. In fact, arrogantly, I consider it a bit of a monstrosity. But it's in the heart of the restaurant, bar, cultural, intellectual district. And uh, you can't miss it if you're browsing in that part of the world. So. Um, quite a classic style as you can see, very grandiose, probably not highly frequented and taking up a lot of space. into these narrow streets used to be the heart of uh, intellectual Paris now you'll see some very fancy boutiques um, so boring the same brand names everywhere in the world but with some local character here and lots of restaurants and bars this place really comes alive in the evenings uh, and especially with the summer evenings uh, it'll be packed with pedestrians 
crawling from bar to restaurant, lots of different styles. There's a few nightclubs as well. And uh, again, part of the, parts of the university dotted around the town. We are in the Mabillon area. Come here in summer in the evening, it's like heaving with people in and out of restaurants. to make sure can you explain everything single things i want to record your voice i can do put voice over afterwards down here this old um this used to be a market and it's been converted uh, into a high-end shopping center with some interesting delis as well as more fashion brands. Um, one of the few remaining Marks and Spencer stores in Paris. Seco is a chain, so I don't believe it when it says it's a craftsman. It's not a real um, It's not a real individual uh, baker. And uh, not quite as good as uh, as many of the individual privately owned bakers that are subsidized, heavily subsidized by the French state, which helps to keep them alive and helps us to still eat really good bread, whichever neighborhood you happen to be in. This monstrosity is a university building and includes a cafeteria for uh, students at incredible prices. If you're a real student, you get subsidized meals in these institutions and they're well worth it because they're mm -hmm. French. So there's a balanced diet and with a three course meal that's healthy. We're on Rue du Four as it comes into Boulevard Saint-Germain. So Saint-Germain and Saint-Michel are the two main boulevards that cross that are perpendicular and really are the uh, framework, the backbone and skeleton of the Latin Quarter. Over there, um, that church, and uh, it's just overlooking the uh, cafe. The Dumago, which is the intellectual haunt for existentialists, or was back in the 60s, 50s and 60s. And um, the church was where the slaughter of the Protestants happened um, some 500 years ago. 
This is Boulevard Saint-Germain, uh, one of the biggest, one of the main thoroughfares of the Latin Quarter. And across the river, we get back into a warren of narrow little streets built up from the medieval period. So this really is the heart of historic Paris, twinned with the Marais across the river. And uh, they're down that way. If you go down all the way down there, you'll end up at Saint Michel. But we're going to turn left into the Rue de Seine. More restaurants, more bars, more high-end uh, boutiques, and a really nice little stroll down to the river, uh, over to the um, to the Institut, uh, and um, and lots of monuments, uh, and coming up to the footbridge across to the Louvre. We're now on the Ile de la Cité, which is one of the two main islands in uh, inside Paris. And this is actually where Paris started. It used to be only on this island. When the uh, Romans came and settled here, they built up Paris from this island, Lutece, and there was nothing but fields to the north and fields to the south. Um, eventually, as, as the city grew, the north became a commercial district and the south became the location of numerous abbeys and uh, convents and religious institutions, which is how it became uh, the heart of uh, intellectual Paris, because obviously it was the religious institutions which um, brought education and which became the centres of universities and the centres of learning. Paris Prefecture is the building ahead of us. Um, frequent nightmare for foreigners trying to get their papers, which is, this is where they have to queue up for days before being told no. And on the left, the Hôtel Dieu, one of Paris's oldest hospitals and an extraordinary architectural monument. They keep trying to tear it down or turn it into a five-star hotel. For now, it has survived, thank goodness, because it really is extraordinary. But unfortunately, it can't be visited since COVID, which is a shame because it, it's, uh, it's an amazing architectural uh, uh, creation. Here we are at Le Tombeau, a typical uh, trendy Paris bistro. North, uh, northwest of Leal, if I remember correctly, of Châtelet. Um, so, not not to sell the location, but rather the style of eating and the fresh bread. Really, what makes eating in France a delight and a pleasure. This looks amazing. Look at this. Look at this.